Having established the crossover concept, Nissan's Qashqai has been hard at work perfecting it, a 2010 facelift followed by the introduction of a class-leading 1.6-litre DCI diesel engine. As a result, this remains a hard option to ignore if you like the idea of this kind of car, something combining elements of compact 4x4, family hatch and compact MPV. Best of all, it's a family car that's anything but boring. If ever a car can be said to have reinvented its brand, it's this one, Nissan's Qashqai. In fact, you could easily contend that uh, this model reinvented the whole market for family cars. Prior to its launch in 2007, after all, those looking uh, to buy a vehicle above the small car sector and wanting uh, a versatile and relatively affordable runabout had only four kinds of cars that they could buy. A focus size family hatch, a Mondeo style medium range model, or for the more daring, compact versions of other 4x4s or MPVs. Now, Nissan's brilliance was in deciding to create a design that brought together uh, elements of all of these uh, types of models into one uh, affordable, uh, practical and also desirable package. And so the modern crossover vehicle was born. Sure enough, it offered the maneuverability of a family hatch, along, uh, to some extent at least, with the space of something Mondeo sized and some of the off-piste ability of a soft-roading 4x4, along with a little of that genre's SUV style appeal. Uh, MPV versatility was even added to the mix when in 2009 a Qashqai Plus 2 variant with seven seats was launched. But of course, competitive brands were watching, and by early 2010, the crossover market that Qashqai had created was filling out with rivals like Peugeot's 3008, uh, BMW's X1, and Skoda's Yeti. Nissan responded with this heavily revised second generation version, a car that was smarter and cleverer. But crucially, not quite as efficient as the best from the new wave of crossover competition, as rivals just kept on coming. But here's a Qashqai that is, launched in the autumn of 2011 and powered by a 130 brake horsepower, 1.6 litre DCI diesel that decimates every other engine in the range when it comes to performance, fuel economy and emissions. More importantly for Nissan, it grabs back class leadership in all of these areas, just as new crossover rivals like Audi's Q3, Subaru's XV and Mazda's CX-5 were beginning to look more credible. As a result, the provision of this engine looks to have returned this model to a position at or near the top of its class. But in practice, well, let's put this car to the test and find out. If you want a crossover model of this kind, then this one remains the benchmark, especially when it comes to on-tarmac driving dynamics. As with all its like-minded rivals, this car aims to offer everything that people like about butch-looking SUVs in a more practical and affordable family hatch-shaped package. So you get all the looks without any of the compromises you'll not want to make if you never go off-road. So curbs can be mounted and unmade roads traversed, but you'll need to leave the Serengeti to Ranulf Fines. Although four-wheel drive is an option to help with muddy car parks and snowy driveways. At the wheel, it feels like a normal family hatch in which you simply sit a little higher. Nice, but trying to convince something that looks and feels like an SUV to handle like a car is no easy task. After all, conventional wisdom suggests that the higher you make a vehicle, and this one sits about 15 centimetres higher off the ground than a, a typical Golf or Focus family hatch, then the more it will roll. But Nissan's British Cranfield engineers clearly don't believe in conventional wisdom, because uh, this uh, Qashqai manages to deliver its um, tall stance and supple multi-link suspension, uh, the supple ride it produces, without taut responsive handling becoming a casualty in the process. A truly class-leading family hatchback, say Ford's Focus, is rather better of course, but it can't offer this car's wide range of attributes, further improved since the 2010 facelift by revised damper settings which have improved comfort and responsiveness. Even better news is that the brakes are strong, 
the standard six-speed gearbox, reasonably slick, and even the electric power steering, quite responsive. And refinement? Well, that wasn't really a strong point of the original version of this car, especially compared to rivals like Peugeot's 3008. But it's been much improved on this revised version thanks to extra noise insulation and an acoustic windscreen. As for engines, well, the entry-level petrol and diesel units, that's a 117 PS 1.6 litre petrol or a 110 PS 1.5 litre DCI diesel, well, they struggle a little to uh, move nearly one and a half tonnes of metalwork along, but uh, they still manage rest to 60 in around uh, 12 seconds on the way to a top speed in the region of about 110 miles an hour. More relaxed is the variant that I'm driving here, equipped with the pick of the engines offered across the Qashqai range, a 130 PS 1.6 litre DCI diesel, co-developed with Nissan's alliance partner Renault. And a very good unit it is too, smooth to the throttle but without the uh, narrow all in a rush power band that often blights turbo diesels. Okay, so it's not lightning quick, uh, rest to 60 takes just over 10 seconds on the way to a top speed of 118 miles an hour. But it's a lot quicker than you'd expect from a crossover model capable of delivering a 63 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel figure and a sub 120 grams per kilometre of CO2 reading. An expensive option on both this model and the uh, top 140 PS 2 litre petrol variant is Nissan's all mode four wheel drive system. Now, depending on how you twist the rotary controller down here behind the gear stick, it can either be left in two-wheel drive, uh, switched to auto to shuttle torque backwards or forwards as required, or switched into lock where uh, torque is uh, split to a set 50-50 front to rear so that you can extricate yourself from slipperier situations. Now, it isn't enough to make this Qashqai into any kind of serious off-roader. There isn't enough ground clearance really for that but it would be useful in a snowy snap. So what do we have here? Well, a car that's between 10 and 15 centimetres taller and longer than an average Golf or Focus sized family hatch, but also one that's uh, about the same amount, uh, shorter and lower than a small Freelander style SUV. Styling wise, it's really a tale of two halves. The bottom half, um, butch and SUV-like, the top half sleeker and racy. Now, it sounds like a potentially disastrous aesthetic recipe, but uh, penman Stefan Schwartz has pulled it off and managed not to spoil a good thing by going too far with a 2010 facelift. For this, he smartened up the bonnet, the front bumper, the wings, the front grille and the headlamps, but the effect remains pretty much the same as before, if a little more distinctive and upmarket. It's a look continued at the rear where there are subtle aerodynamic tweaks and LED rear lights. Overall then still the best looking crossover model on sale, an accolade that holds true even, somewhat surprisingly, if you go for the stretched seven seat Qashqai Plus 2 variant. Now uh, this thanks to an addition of 135 millimeters in the wheelbase and an extra 75 millimeters in the rear overhang can accommodate a couple of extra two uh, fold out seats in the boot. Uh, Nissan even increased the roof height by 40 millimeters in an attempt to convince customers that those two rearmost seats really could accommodate a couple of fully sized adults. Sadly, that's not really the case, although they will suffice for shorter journeys and they'll be fine for the carriage of small children. Here though, I'm focusing on the standard five seat Qashqai with a 410 litre boot capacity that gets within 40 litres of that you'd find on the seven seater Qashqai Plus 2. Now there's a much bigger difference between the two variants though when it comes to the seat folded uh, capacity. If you push these split fold uh, rear seats forward, uh, you get uh, just 860 litres in this five seat Qashqai as opposed to 1,520 litres in the Qashqai Plus 2. Now, the other thing to bear in mind when choosing between these two body styles is that this ordinary Qashqai doesn't get a set of sliding rear seats, which rather usefully on the seven seat Qashqai Plus 2 enable you to choose between prioritizing rear seat passenger legroom or space for packages behind. 
Now, uh, that's important because uh, head, leg, and knee room are at a bit of a premium back here and the rear backrest doesn't recline as in some competitive models for greater comfort on longer journeys. So uh, three adults will be a bit of a squash but two will be quite comfortable. Up front it feels much more spacious especially in a version fitted with the full-length glass panoramic roof that I've got here. You get the expected high set crossover seating position, yet there's plenty of headroom and uh, an excellent driving position thanks to uh, a height adjustable seat and a steering wheel tweakable for both reach and rake. Look around you and you won't observe the highest quality cabin in the class but it's solidly built. Uh, with uh, nice detail improvements like low level lighting around the footwells and a smart instrument layout with a neat LCD display in the centre. List pricing suggests that you'll be paying somewhere between 17 and 28 and a half thousand pounds for your Qashqai. Should you wish to progress from the five seater model that I have here to the seven seater Qashqai Plus 2 then you'll need to add around 1400 pounds to the cost of your chosen variant. Diesel models start from around the £18,000 mark, but that's for the 110 PS 1.5 litre DCI, a model inferior in every way to the 130 PS 1.6 litre DCI that I've been trying here, a car that costs from just under £21,000 and is worth the £1,500 premium, believe me. Getting this far and accepting that Qashqai motoring is going to cost you, well, best part of £20,000 if you're going to get a good one is all well and good. What might come as a bit of a shock from there on in though, is the cost of adding the all mode four wheel drive system to this Nissan. For a start, you can't specify it on anything less than a, a quite pricey NTEC Plus variant, and those start from around 23,000 pounds, to which you've got to add around 1,400 pounds to get the four wheel drive system included. It's more wonder that there are so few all wheel drive cash guys on British roads. What really matters though is how pricing across the whole Qashqai lineup stacks up against obvious rivals. Pretty well, I'd suggest. Let's start at the bottom of the range with a bog standard 1.6 litre petrol Qashqai model at just under uh, 17,000 pounds. Now that's about the same amount as you'd pay for a, a directly comparable rivals like Skoda's Yeti 1.4 TSI or uh, the Mitsubishi ASX 1.6 and it'll save you about whoa, 700 pounds over a directly comparable Peugeot 3008 1.6 VTI. The least expensive Qashqai diesel, the 110 PS 1.5 DCI, also undercuts its uh, Peugeot 3008 rival, the uh, 3008 1.6 HDI, by a similar amount. But the model I want to focus on is the one I have here, the 130 PS 1.6 litre DCI diesel. Now, prior to the launch of this variant, if you wanted a crossover class model uh, with a diesel engine, as most buyers do, then you either had to choose something feebly powered that delivered low running costs, or a Pokia 1.8 or 2 litre diesel that offered a poorer showing at the pumps. Now, neither alternative was really ideal, but this is. In two wheel drive form at least, it offers the best of both worlds. So you get a 63 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel return and sub 120 grams per kilometer CO2 reading, uh, along with rest of 60 in around 10 seconds. Plus uh, a price saving of between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds over uh, this model's most obvious uh, competitive rivals in this class. Cars like Peugeot 3008, uh, 2 litre HDI, uh, Mitsubishi's ASX 1.8 diesel, or indeed the Ford Cougar 2 litre TDCi 140. Job done. Or at least it would have been if Nissan had been able to price the uh, all wheel drive version of this model, the one I'm trying here, a little more tightly. As it is, asking close to £25,000 for this car makes it look a little pricey against equivalent all-wheel driven versions of the uh, ASX and the Cougar. And it's similar to the sort of money that you're paying for very capable rivals with a bit more speed. Models like Subaru's XV 2 litre D and the Mazda CX-5 2.2 AWD. But against that, this Nissan is undeniably well equipped. As usual, it'll probably come down in the end to the deal that you're offered. 
And whatever that is, and whatever cash car model you're considering, uh, petrol 1.6 or 2 litre, or diesel 1.5 or 1.6 DCI, then you should find your car to be decently equipped. All models come with things like alloy wheels, uh, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, a trip computer, a decent quality MP3 compatible CD stereo with at least four speakers, uh, an aux in socket and steering wheel controls, uh, power heated mirrors, all round electric windows, air conditioning with a pollen filter and a height adjustable driver's seat. Plusher models like the one that I'm trying here come with auto headlamps and wipers, uh, front fog lights, cruise control, roof rails, uh, the clever Nissan Connect touchscreen sat nav and a large panoramic glass roof with a one touch shade. Arguably the nicest feature standard on plush models like this one is the around view monitor. Now this uses four cameras to give a 360 degree bird's eye view of the car, making tight parking so much easier than using parking sensors alone, thanks to the way that you can see exactly how close you are to various obstacles, not just in front of the car or behind it, but also along the sides of the vehicle. Options include a CVT automatic gearbox, which will add about 1300 pounds to the cost of the uh, various petrol models. And you can also specify it on the smoky old two litre diesel if you really must. If you do have extra budget left over, there are also touches like the lovely leather trim that I have here. As for safety, well, there are the usual front, side and curtain airbags, as well as Isofix child seat fastenings and anti-whiplash head restraints. Plus all the expected electronic driving aids to try and make sure that you never have to use all of that stuff. So things like anti-lock brakes with brake assist to help in emergency stops, and of course, ESP stability control. Now, as I've been saying all the way through this film, the standout model in the Qashqai range really is the 130 PS 1.6 litre DCI diesel that we've been featuring here. Unless upfront budget uh, restrictions really do um, mean that you have to consider the entry level petrol 1.6 or the basic 1.5 litre DCI diesel, then I can't really see why you wouldn't choose it. Here's why. In return for an upfront £1,500 premium over the entry level 1.5 litre diesel, this 1.6 DCI gives you 15% more power and 15% lower running costs. Sounds fair to me. To be more specific, we're talking 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a CO2 return of just 119 grams per kilometre. That's for the five-seat standard Qashqai that I'm driving here. If you go for the seven-seat Qashqai Plus 2 with this uh, 1.6 litre DCI engine, then uh, you're looking at 60.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 123 grams per kilometre of CO2. Both sets of stats are a big improvement on the older but less powerful engine fitted to a 1.5 litre DCI diesel Qashqai. Uh, in standard form, that delivers 54.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 137 grams per kilometre of CO2. And either way, you're looking at a big improvement on the figures returned by comparable rivals. Let me explain. If you're looking at diesel crossover models, then you'd need one with between 140 and 150 PS to match this Nissan's performance. In which case, you'd also be looking at a car that would go more than 10 fewer miles on every gallon and would return you a CO2 reading of up around 150 grams per kilometer uh, that would make a big impact on your tax liability. Now, all of that assumes that you're looking at the two-wheel drive version of this car. Opting for it with Nissan's all-mode four-wheel drive system, as I have here, makes a fair difference to those uh, running cost stats. The uh, combined cycle fuel figure deteriorating to 55.4 miles to the gallon, and the CO2 figure going down to 135 grams per kilometer. Mind you, that's still a slug better than direct rivals can manage in all-wheel drive form. Now, much of the reason for the healthy returns you get in this 1.6 DCI is the fact that uh, it comes with a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're, say, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. The stop-start system is also an option on the entry-level 117 PS petrol 1.6, and uh, in that guise, it helps that engine to record 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a CO2 return of 139 grams per kilometer. 
What else? Uh, well, for some reason, insurance groups for this 1.6 litre DCI diesel are a little higher than those of other models in the Qashqai lineup, ranging between 21 and 22. Um, in the standard lineup, uh, the five seat Qashqai uh, insurance groups range between 13 and 18 on the 150 grouping scale. Uh, for the Qashqai Plus 2, it's between 17 and 21. Residual values, well, uh, they should be a little higher than you can expect with other Nissan models. For many, this, the original crossover model, is still the very best, remaining a fine option for buyers who'd rather not be saddled with run-of-the-mill hatches or people carriers, and who simply don't want the clunkiness and cost common to even smaller SUVs. Of course, there's nowadays a tougher set of rivals for this car to deal with, but Nissan's product development has done just enough to keep this Qashqai ahead of most of the chasing pack. The 2010 facelift was a step in the right direction in this respect, but it's been the introduction of the 130 PS 1.6 litre DCI diesel that we've been testing here that's proved to be far more significant. With sales no longer dependent on the entry-level petrol 1.6 litre variant that most UK customers used to choose, this Qashqai uh, now has a much wider range of talents to offer potential buyers, people who might otherwise have been swayed by the competing charms of more recently introduced rivals. A very clever car then, a benchmark, and a starting point for anyone buying in this segment.